possible. So the design freedom that you get with 3D printing just opens up a whole new world for us. And so... And all of that passes whatever crash tests and stress tests and... All of their designs, regardless of how we're going to make it, whether it's 3D printed, whether it's just normal forged lumen or cast or, or carbon fiber or anything, we're going to go through a very similar set of uh, design constraints in terms of structural... Because it is, at the end of the day, it, it's a safety thing, right? So we sure. need so, to be safe. So serious so. loads being put on these things. And, Absolutely. And, so. and with more power that everybody's making now, speeds are much higher. It just puts the loads and the cars are So cars are heavier. Cars so. Are Heavy. I've been there 24 years, and so the load ratings that we run now just keep inching up, up, and up, and up. And now with EVs, so EVs, they're not just Priuses. They're, they're, they're literally high-performance EVs that now weigh another 1,200 pounds more than, sure. than oh, the yeah. comparable sedan or something. Hey, welcome to Car Guy Confessions, brought to you by ARP. I'm Jeff Smith. This is my car buddy, Cam Benzie, and car builder, Steve Strope, and we're going to tell you the story. Welcome to another episode of Car Guy Confessions with Jeff Smith, brought to you by our friends at ARP-Bolts.com. Well done. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, as you can tell, we're someplace new. This From is, the reverberation. Yes, but this is it's worth it, because this it place is, is really cool. We're at the Peterson Museum, and if you can't tell... There's some serious race cars behind us. But um, so this is kind of like, I mean, for me and for Cam, I mean, it's kind of like coming home. Yeah, because, the same. Yeah. yeah I yeah. mean, it's, this, is, this is very, very cool. But we have a special guest, uh, Alan <laughs> Peltier. Did I get That's that right? That's good, yeah. Oh, man. Thank you very much. <laughs> so <laughs> from HRE Wheels. Whew, and, pass that. Yeah, whew, yeah, thank you very much. So um, there's going to be a spelling quiz later. Later? Okay, yeah. good. So everybody I'll, at home, I'll, get your pencils. <laughs> <laughs> and no going on Google. Yeah, yeah. Mm, but uh, no uh, we, we, we just have to say thank you for the Peterson people, people letting us do this because Indeed. this yes. was not, you know, this is not normal for us. But at the same time, it's very, very And cool. we're starting yeah. slow. They stuck us in the basement. Yeah. <laughs> don't want to be. Where, quite okay. frankly, this is where we want to be. They don't want to even admit we're here. This is where all the cool cars are. It, True yeah. there is. There, well, well, although there, no, no, well, sure, sure, every sure. floor yeah. has yeah. every floor has some very cool stuff yeah, on it, cool and it, it has changed significantly since the first. Oh my goodness! In the very beginning, unbelievable. Then it was redone and then redone again. That's right. Right, and so we're in the third iteration, and uh, this is my first time back with the third iteration, really? and I yeah I, I have huh. not been here in a long time, and uh, it's it's extremely nice. I mean so. Yeah. Come, come here. World um, class, yes, level absolutely. of museum. Absolutely. Yeah. Even, so. even the European car magazines, which I get, believe it or not, I'm not as much of a caveman as you think. Um, have, <laughs> I have am. A, okay, okay, good. Um, I have have also put in print that th they've visited this and said this yeah, is, it is the Peterson is now. Yeah, in and, their and eyes, it, considered one of the world's best automotive museums, you, and it is. You know, we, we we worked here. I worked for Peterson for over thirty years, so you know, you kind of downplay it all because it's just you know, but it's not just a job, and this is not just a museum. This is really yeah. something very very special, and you tend to having. I think it changed my perspective of having left and then come back. Right, you know, mm -hmm. and now being back here for the first time in quite a while, it's 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 very very special. So, it's it's exciting and it's a little bit like coming home. So it's it's very cool. It's very cool. So shall we dive right in? We shall. <laughs> Since we're at the highfalutin, super high class museum, we thought our first guest would be from a super falutin, high class rim company. Wheel company, yes. Known as H R E. So we'll, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna solve the burning question. Does HRE stand for oh, something? Gosh. <laughs> Actually, so it's an interesting history. So HRE started Thanks. as a and next <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's a we we started as a <laughs> That's fascinating, yeah. Alan. <laughs> yeah. No, we started as a distributor for Japanese wheel company Hayashi Racing Enterprises way oh, back really? in the day. Really? And then okay. when that separated our founder just ended up keeping the name, and, okay. and so it's just, and, and now just it just sticks. Now it sticks. People ask us what it stands for, and it's like, yeah, yeah. it doesn't stand for much anymore. I mean, okay. it stands well, for well. <laughs> and you said somebody. Uh, our our creative guys are literally there. Would, they're they're freaking the, out right now. I'm yeah. hoping the owner of HRE <laughs> just heard that we don't stand for much. <laughs> they're literally going to kill me. <laughs> 
<laughs> highest quality wheel my ass. Yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean much. Don't worry about it. It's nothing. It's, okay. it's nothing. We don't stand for yeah, much. We, we don't, don't for care much. a lot. <laughs> yeah. We don't give to any charities, so forget it. Yeah. So, so as for, to give yeah. the viewers a perspective, um, yeah. the focus of your wheels is basically high end machines. Yeah, like I mean, I think you know what. Let's say exceeding quality. It's not a standard issue quality. It's for a discerning person. And I know that sounds almost yeah. snooty, but that's. It's true. It's I someone think. who wants the quality, wants to know that the stuff is built at a at a certain level of fit and finish. Yeah, so, it's a, there's definitely an, there is, there's definitely an exclusivity about the brand. So mm-hmm. um, it's all build order, and you're right. And so a lot of our customers are coming to us for the quality, um, the cachet, just bragging rights in a lot of sure. cases. But uh-huh. yeah, if you're not familiar with the brand, I think our our, probably our average retail price for a set of wheels is in the twelve thirteen thousand range right okay. now. So that's for a set of four. Yeah. yeah, that's for a set of four. You can do the math. <laughs> yeah, I hope. <laughs> and we have some that go up to about thirty grand. So, Ooh. <clears throat> well, okay. and then there's the printed titanium. Yeah, that's that didn't make it to production yet. So we're still working on. Um, 3D printing and additive. So our additive program is. So the center is. is yeah. So 3D, what we did is we did a we did a program with a, a project with GE a few years ago where we took some 3D printed titanium designs and okay. put it into a carbon fiber barrel. And I'm gonna and give I'm gonna give my guys yeah. the photos of these wheels so that they're um, putting them up on the screen while we're talking. <clears throat> you you gearheads, which who else is watching this? Um, oh, my mom probably is. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> zoom in. Yeah. Look at these things. It's it's outer worldly. When when I saw them up in Vegas, when you had them in the private room, yeah. And then it, somebody handed me one. They're, they were twenty twos. Yeah, something and, like that. And they, they're like know, made of helium. <laughs> It's yeah, a it was carbon like barrel. Like a, well, the, 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 down the, so it'll float away. Yeah. The thing about, it, I mean, it was titanium. So titanium is actually heavier, denser than aluminum. Mm-hmm. So you have to be careful with it. But with three D printing, you're able to create all kinds of hollow structures, and the parts can pass through. Yeah, each I showed other. Jeff so them okay. last night. It's a yeah. complexity level oh, that you just can't do with with, with t- typical machining. We have twenty two CNC machines. We couldn't. We couldn't. I mean, some of our designs take over 10, 12 hours. We had a prototype, took 20 hours to machine, but something like that, for that one, would, for, for one, one wheel. wheel. One wheel. Yeah, we How one, long does the titanium that center would take, take? That would take, if we were to try and machine that, that would be five, I, I, it, it'd take a month or something, you know, that'd be insane. Really? It, it wow. would just, and it would well, be so complicated, it's not really possible. So the design but, freedom that you get with 3D printing just opens up a whole new world for us, and so, and all of that passes whatever crash tests and stress tests and all of their designs, regardless of how we're going to make it, whether it's 3D printed, whether it's just normal forged aluminum or cast or or carbon fiber or anything, we're going to go through a very similar set of uh, design constraints in terms of structural because it is at the end of the day, it, it it's a safety thing, right? So we sure. just need so, to be safe. So serious so. loads being put on these things, absolutely. And, and, so. and with more power that everybody's making now, speeds are much higher. It just puts the loads and the cars are heavier. So cars are heavier. So cars I've been there 24 years, and so the load ratings that we run now just keep inching up, up, and up, and up. And now with EVs, so EVs, they're not just Priuses. They're, they're, they're literally high-performance EVs that now weigh another 1,200 pounds more than, sure. the, than oh, yeah. a comparable sedan or yeah. something. Mm. And so the load ratings, and so we're having to make things a lot stronger, but then do everything we can to make sure that it's still high-performance wheels. So we need to reduce the mass as much as possible. So we use a lot of computer simulation and a lot of com- or computer analysis and, to make that happen. And that's a significant load that a lot of people don't take into consideration because I mean, we did a test a long, long time ago at CarCraft where we had a heavy set of steel wheels, accelerated yeah. the car, took the drag strip, brought it back, put some lightweight wheels yeah. on, and the car went, I think, 1,500ths hundredths of a second quicker. So. The, because of the mass. Unsprung yeah. weight. There's two. There's well, it's, weight. it's unsprung weight, number one, but it's acceleration. Rotation. Mass. Yeah, that's, yeah, so that's the mass. rotational inertia. So. And, and the further out you go. Exactly. So yeah. the rotational way rotational inertia works is it's, it's mass distribution about the rotational center. So you don't want to have a lot of heavy mass far away from that center axis. And right. so as wheels get bigger and bigger and bigger, which they are, mm-hmm. to, cl- to clear the bigger and bigger brakes, you're getting a lot more rotational inertia. And so that affects acceleration. And more important, it affects it affects deceleration, right? So it's going to take right, more energy to stop. Because the object in motion yeah. tends right, to stay right. in motion. And so that's why our highest end product, we have a carbon fiber barrel, which is going to take that and reduce that. Even in, more. In, even more. Right. Right. I was going to mention that because I know you were uh, just in 
over the years of talking with you, you were outside sourcing the carbon barrel in you. And that is still the case. Pulling. No, we it still it? are. I thought so you were, you were going so inside now. the difference is uh, we are working exclusively with our technical partner. So we went to them and we're work, we worked with them to develop the constraints and the design, I mean, all the design constraints and we had uh, input on some of the material trusses. We're not carbon, I used to be a carbon fiber expert 30 years ago, but I'm not anymore. And so we're wheel experts. So together we designed a part together and then they're making it for us exclusively for us. Yeah. But because of that, we think we have the best carbon fiber rim on the market. So we'd like to thank our sponsor, ARP and ARP-Bolts.com. And, uh, I mean, we all three build cars. We all work yeah. on this stuff. And I, I tinker. Mean, you tinker. I we, tinker. Yes, we all build. Yeah, and, and you know what? It's, it's kind of a, a really cool multiple-purpose fastener for me because there's all the science and all the technology, which is bottomless. Trust me. Unbelievable amount of research that they put into these sure, things. Sure, Absolutely. And on top of it, you get them out of the, the package, and they're absolutely beautiful, which I've joked before. It's like jewelry for your right. car. And when pre -oil. we're building yep. a, when we're yeah, and when we're building a high end car, it, there isn't anything else going on it. I need, it's part of the criteria for right. me to have them lining the engine bay, not just on the engine, everywhere. Yeah. Right. So right. you get all the strength, the durability, the reliability, and fantastic good looks. Right. Sure. Kind of like Jeff here. And without, yeah. and without peer. <laughs> without peer. With, and you know what? Or pair. With, with, without peer. There's, no, there's nobody else Correct. that does that what is, they do. It is. So check them out at arp-bolts.com, and they can help you out. How much lighter is that than aluminum, for example, on, let's say, 18 or 19 or 20 inches? You're going to get about a – you'd think it would be huge savings, uh -huh. um, but the load conditions are actually really difficult for a rim, and so it ends up being like 20% or so. Still, and still It's significant. still significant. But or 20% per rim. Yeah. 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 So now and you're so, multiplying that times right. four around the car. So right. Sure. And yeah. so you're going to get a pretty – Nice. Uh, again, and also in terms of rotational inertia, you're going to get a, a, a significant savings. Right, right. But the, the, the downside is cost. And so we're yeah. looking at something that's significantly more. But like more. autocross racers, road course racers, there would be an advantage there because you could then dive the car into the corner a little bit harder because it's going to be easier to get the car to slow down. Of course. You still have the mass of the vehicle. That's only a, The wheels are only a small percentage. Are, yeah. they, are they using but carbon because of the wheels or carbon hooped wheels in competition? Does FIA allow I that? I don't know of any competition where they are. And, and, and honestly, the wheels can handle it from a fatigue perspective. They can handle it from an impact. But the reality is if you brush up against something, or you're going to damage it's, it. It's and done. so yeah. and it's expensive to fix. Yeah. And so we designed them to make sure that they can handle a ton of abuse. It's just it's so expensive. The reality is most of our customers right. aren't going to use yeah. it for that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so. no, I understand. I mean, is it allowed in, in racing? Do they allow a car? In anything where it's like Formula One now, and, and it's a lot of the... The, the wheels are spec wheels, so they're all running the same spec wheel. So right. in, in most cases, you're not going to see anything like right. that. Yeah. 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 So now that we start, now the upper, the one we're talking about now, the printed titanium yeah. and the carbon barrel is not manufactured yet. No. And but when it is, is it about 25,000 a wheel? It, well, whether we do a titanium watch that squirmy <laughs> <laughs> and i don't i don't i don't think that the titanium uh direct metal print titanium solution is where we're going to go first and so we're working oh, they on look some so good no 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 and they'll look better what we okay. end up coming out with will look Says nice. you. We'll, it'll look better <laughs> i'm not worried about that yeah. but there's some that technology is still really young and so mm. we're looking at some other technologies to basically get our 3d printed product to market so yeah. um so where, where are you throwing the dollar figure guessing uh, when it goes to market probably more in the 40 to fifty thousand dollar range is what yeah, we're wow thinking. there you so, go but again yeah. looking that at that in ratio um i think it was patrick that it Patrick's, I'm sure, watching. Um, <laughs> it's our Patrick, creative director. Pa Patrick, Patrick's one of the other guys that don't care much at yeah, HRE. He's, he's the one that's going <laughs> to kick me when I get back. <laughs> right. Um, uh, had said there was there's kind of this unspoken ratio of how expensive the car is, yeah. how much someone will spend on the rim. So if it's wheels. a $2 million yeah. Yeah. P1... Yeah, then they're going to so two hundred thousand. That's not an issue, and so that's the thing. And so once you get to a certain level, I mean, with our current carbon product, we're we're dealing with a lot of Porsche GT cars and things like that, right? Um, SF nineties, you know, GT threes. Um, when you start getting above fifty thousand, you're really talking seven figure cars at that point. So sure, you're of really in the hypers, right? right. And yeah. so there's not a huge market at that point. 
Um, and for us, it's a technology demonstration if we go into the LM right. realm. And, yeah, but so you're not making 3,000 sets of these no. wheels, so that, that, but it, that hits the cost. Some of the, some of the technologies we're looking at today, we're actually trying to see if there's ways for us to uh, scale it up and also make sure that we can eventually get the cost down uh, to be competitive with our current Forge product because we would love for it to be not just a niche thing, but be the bulk of our business in the long term. Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> so moving down from the printed yeah. carbon wheel, where, where are we now? What's the next tier down? Or the highest tier you're selling now? So right now it's a, it's a forge center with a carbon fiber rim, okay. right? And that, again, those are and, 25 to 30. And how now. is that connected? How do, how it's do you uh, titan ARP, actually titanium fasteners. So. Titanium fasteners. Yeah, okay. so, titanium so there's fasteners. a flange then? That the, yeah, the exactly. So that was, that was actually a challenge. Um, because the load is going to be all yeah, right so, there. Yeah, so, you know, mimicking the way you do it with an aluminum rim for carbon fiber was a bit of a challenge. So we had to make our flange fairly special uh -huh. yeah, <laughs> to yeah. do that. Um, but it works really well. Uh -huh. And it, and uh, we're not having any problems in all the testing and everything we've been doing. Some We have an uh, exotic car manufacturers and running on them for a couple of years now doing a lot of testing and okay. stuff. And they've been great. So. Cool. Um, after that, if you're going down, then you're in a normal forged. So you're into either one piece, two piece, or three piece forged. With and a center. A, with a, with a, a forged center. center. Forged and center. one of the things that we've done recently is introduced a forged rim to make a two piece wheel. So now it's the same flange. It's just like the carbon barrel. In is fact, that, the design is that is what you guys similar. call the flow form? Uh, no, that's our FMR. So okay. FMR, uh, flow form is our cast wheel. But that's at the lowest end. So, right. so you actually have a cast wheel. Yeah, those okay. aren't made by us. Okay. So we design them, and they're made either in Japan or made in Taiwan. Okay. Um, but our two-piece, um, traditionally three-piece is what everybody's known for, right? Sure. But really, it's, it's kind of like a 40-year-old technology. So the rims are spun. They're not CNC turned. So they end up being a little heavier than we'd like. They're not thick where we want the them rim to be. Hoop. The rim barrel, yeah. Okay. yeah. They're, they're thin where we don't want them to be thin. So they're inefficient, and they're not as precise. And so... If you want to have something that has a similar tight runouts and tight tolerances of one piece forged, um, then we created a, a two piece wheel. And so the rim is made essentially the same way as a one piece forged, it's just the center is cut out. And then we bolt in our own center. Right. And then you get the styling of a three piece wheel, but you get that precision of a one piece wheel. There is a weight penalty because there's bolts. Mm -hmm. And so we use ARP fasteners for those. And so there's, there's fastener, but, and that does add some weight, the flange and the bolts and everything, but it gets you halfway there. So it's okay. lighter than a three piece. Uh, it's more than a one piece, but it's more precise and, and it's the like process of making the barrels. Is that, that, is that still that same situation? We start with a disc and they, and they literally, yeah, so apply pressure to it and it, it turns into a bell. Which so is kind of fun. with with a normal three piece rim, you start with a flat sheet and then you you call it's called spinning and you basically spin it into a hoop shape, a uh -huh. barrel shape. Yeah. With flow forming for one piece forge, two piece, our two piece rim, and our cast wheels, you're actually starting with a solid. In the case of a forging or the or the FMR barrel, you're starting with a solid forging and you're squeezing out the solid aluminum. You're you're literally starting, you're not just folding it over. Okay. You're you're literally squeezing out all this aluminum and it makes it much much stronger wow and, so, and what is the force the tonnage i don't know the tonnage yeah. but it's a lot it's a lot <laughs> yeah, it have yeah. to be it looks like it's made out of play-doh when it's yes, happening it does. It is, and in fact is, it's just like i always it say it's like forged? making i say is it's it making, heated up or cold forged um for uh, cast wheels they're i'm gonna get this wrong they're ca they're heated for forged they're not they're cold they're done okay. cold it's stronger when it's cold cold pressed right it depends on the alloys so on why it's hot or cold. So yeah, right. but in general, yeah. the forge is always going to be the forge material is just a lot stronger. So sure. the difference in cast aluminum and forged aluminum, uh, forged aluminum obviously it's it's, it's forty percent stronger or something. Sure. But um, the the main thing when it comes to wheels also is it has what's called toughness. So in engineering terms, it's it's got toughness, which is its ability to absorb a lot of energy, and. With a forged wheel, if you hit a big pothole or something, it, it's going to take a lot more before it damages, and when it does, it's going to bend typically mm -hmm. before it cracks. Whereas right. a, we hit right. a, if you hit a pothole with a cast wheel, often they crack right away. Exactly. Because they're kind of, yeah. They don't have that toughness. Yeah. So, is there a law of diminishing returns on wheel diameter, or, or so you know, with, because the sidewalls just yeah. keep getting shorter? We're, I mean, the reality for us is our. I mean, a 911 comes with a 21 inch reel in, on the back of it now mm -hmm. uh, from the factory. And so we're kind of following what the OEs are doing and what the brake manufacturers are doing. 
And so the brakes keep getting bigger and bigger, and the, the, the OEs keep bringing bigger and bigger. I mean, the idea that a 911 comes with a 21-inch rear 21. wheel wow. is wow. crazy. But a, a lot of that, I think, has to do with, they're all driven, they run, they run, a lot of the guys with the 21s, all the exotic cars are running the same 21. A lot of them are running the same tires from Michelin. So okay. that's driving a lot of it, those yeah. high-performance yeah. tires. Yeah. So. This is tough on the street because it's a no. really short. Well, they, the overall diameter gets taller. Sure. So they, yeah. so that ratio that the, the ratios may get because the tires get wider. The mm -hmm. ratio may get smaller, but the actual amount of rubber sidewall is still the amount decent. of side. Yeah, the amount yeah. that's pretty much stays the same. It is mm -hmm. the diameter just the overall diameter just gets bigger and bigger. It's interesting how way way back in the 1900s, you know, the talls were wheels were really tall and tires were really skinny. Yeah. And it seems like that's core. The width yeah. has changed radically, well, but back but, then know, the, the roads. So back then the roads were awful, right? So yeah. in order to get through needed, a rut, yes, uh, yeah, you had to have a really really big, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you had to have <laughs> a really that big. Just means all the manufacturers yeah. have been in New York and California. <laughs> yeah, back yeah. yeah. that was probably more had to do with the roads, roads. right? Exactly. Had to do with the roads oh, than yeah, anything absolutely. else, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. It would never happen to drive, <laughs> you know, with in the mud this deep. That would sure. just wouldn't work. Well, yeah. most yep. Porsches don't wind up doing that, <laughs> except the new Dakar. Yeah, yeah, you got those. So stepping back to starting as a distributor mm -hmm. for a foreign wheel company mm -hmm. and then the owner of the company decided, decided to, to make started decide back in the 80s decided to start making his own wheels and then, and then the, what was that the five what's that rim center that the, the split for 501 no what, 540 been around forever the 540 540 so those are in the 90s so in the 90s actually on every bmw and yeah oh the mesh design basically yep. and so the way that it was he started doing that in the 80s in the 90s actually our current owners bought the company in 93 so these guys have owned it for 30 years okay and in the 90s hre started moving into forged three piece so before it was cast it had cast centers with spun rims and then it moved into forged centers with spun rims. And then in 2006 or so, we started moving into one-piece forged wheels. And now we have carbon fiber. We have two-piece. Have... Right. And actually, three-piece is becoming a much, much smaller piece of our business. That traditional, really? it's really just okay. for someone who has a really crazy fitment that we can't meet with two-piece or one-piece. And we have so much flexibility now on those that on most modern cars, it's it's not an issue. Okay. We can meet them. And your, your customer base, i.e., the obviously a whole ton of sports car, supercar, hypercar. Yeah. Um, way back when, let's say in the 80s or in the 90s, that was really the buyer too, the BMW, the 911 guy. They, they That was kind of already there. Yeah. Right? That direction was our, sure. those, those groups were already together, HRE mm -hmm. with your sports car, European sedan, yes. uh, that kind of thing. And then they both kind of grew together. Yeah. And um, like the 540 uh, we're talking about, yeah. there was a, you would back in the day you you would see that wheel with like a gold center, um, <laughs> yeah. but 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 it, but it was iconic and yeah, I, the, for sure. I've got no, I'm not busting yeah. on it. I you know that yeah. it became synonymous though. It was yeah. an image. It was a look, for sure. which is fantastic. And that, and, and actually, that's great. even today we have what we call our vintage series, which are wheels that and are, I use them. Yeah, very much purposely designed to look like they're from the 80s. Mm -hmm. And then we have our classics, which are designed to look like they come from the 90s. And they're okay. much simpler than something that we would design today. So, I mean, they take maybe an hour to do the milling on versus seven, eight hours or something like that for some of our and, more and complex And they've got some designs. real good, they've got yeah. a rim that looks like the one off the Diablo. They got a rim that looks like, yeah. um, let's see, off the F40. F, the, yeah, right, um, exactly. Like old school Ferrari, Lambo, mm -hmm. uh, obviously Porsche. Um, and, and actually one of the things that we're starting to do is we just did the fast and furious 10 wheel, uh, for the, for the lead car, Dom's car. And we're going to create, uh, we, we do a lot of stuff for, uh, resto mods, you know, builders like the ring brothers and guys like you. Yeah. And guys oftentimes, like me. <laughs> oftentimes Thanks. they're, but the problem is oftentimes they're one-offs. And so people see it and they want to buy it, but it's not really something that we can make fit anything else. And so now yeah. we're saying, okay, we got to stop doing that. We need to start, we have all these sort of heritage uh, muscle car wheels designs and, and we need to take them and put them into a series where you can put them on anything and whether it's something new or something old and it's much more flexible. Oh. And so we're going to, we're going to be 
coming out with something like that too. You, you so, have And that would it? be that would be a two piece wheel? It could be a two piece, three piece, or probably even it'd mostly be two piece and three piece. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, there you might be some one piece versions. But I'll but, get yeah. I'll get Alan Patrick. Um, <laughs> send me uh, shots of the wheel that's on Dom's charger. Yeah. They and I, and I'm I'm saying this straight up. Mm. They did a torque thrust. Yeah. But it's their own way. Uh huh. And it looks yeah. really good. Yeah. That's which is rare. Usually, if and it's that's something you're going to sell. Yeah. 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 And absolutely. It looks, it looks really good. It mm -hmm. looks like yeah. a T70. The spoke is real. That's pointed heat and pointed, pointed? Uh -huh. and it looks good in a big diameter. Okay. They did a nice job of modernizing it, yeah. but it's still very clearly the the lineage it came from uh -huh. without yeah. looking and diameters. Yeah, it's, that's it's about it's the be, biggest compliment. I'm not I can sure give what <laughs> it's going to be available in a lot of different. Diameters. Okay, so yeah. and I and I think that's a good point. I mean, even when we're taking something that's you know, there's a lot of iconic wheels that I know I grew up with. Uh, either in European motorsport or whether it's muscle car. And if we're going to do something that we're, we're not going to just copy it, we don't want to just copy something. We're right, going to take right. basically the, the feel, you know, like what's the feel of it, right? Mm -hmm. What is that design vision? Well, why is it iconic? Yeah, why yeah. is it iconic? Yeah. And yeah. keep that, but then modernize it. Obviously, it's going to meet all our engineering and all that stuff as True. well, but just tweak it in ways that add to it don't detract from it um, so uh, yeah. you know we don't ever want to make it worse yeah they did a really good job yeah. i was i just yeah. i saw it for the first time a couple of weeks it's gonna be more than that one it'll be several, yeah we want to add more we want to add more because yeah. we're just getting yeah. a lot of requests um sure and also on the japanese car side there's a lot of sort of heritage japanese wheels that i'd love to personally see but mm -hmm. we'll see yeah <laughs> Hey, we'd like to thank our sponsor, ARP-Bolts.com. we got a fantastic little backdrop here. They make an outstanding series of bolts, almost anything you would need for engines, chassis, things like that. In fact, we were at lunch today, and a guy asked you about the, the, the bolt on the back of your shirt, and, it was, and, it was really, and I said, well, it's really about a head bolt. They neck the, 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 the stem down of the bolt on a short small block Chevy head bolt, so the clamp load is even across three different head bolt lengths on a small block Chevy. And, uh, you know, so that, that's the kind of technology that you get out of sure. ARP. And uh, we, we've all got stories on all that right. stuff. Well, but, for a uh, translation of what he said, call ARPBolts.com. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the message is that you can't get any better than that. No, you so cannot. There yep. you go. Nope. Excellent. And then just check them out at ARP-Bolts.com. We'd like to thank our friends at InTheGarageMedia.com. They have three fantastic magazines. They've got Classic Truck Performance. They have Modern Rotting and my favorite, All Chevy Performance, with Nick, my buddy Nick, oh, you're the so editor. Biased. So Correct. yes, of course. Yes. But uh, they're doing print media, which yes. is, uh, of course, our favorite. So in uh, color magazine. and everything. In color and everything, yes. and and you can get your your car on the cover of one of those books, right. which is right. a fun no, that's deal. A lot. Great yeah. tech. You Great tech. Written written by you, you know, and not always written by me, but yeah. People. Yeah. Not yeah. always written by me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Just so pick it up and read it. At yes. InTheGarageMedia.com, and uh, they're our friends, and uh, they will thank you. So what is our average shipping? How many wheels a month are, you, are, we, are we putting out? Um, average wheels per month? Uh, I, Ish. I think of more. More than four? More than four, yeah. <laughs> we have 22 CNC machines, so I hope so. Um, and and it's actually hooked up to a robotic cell system, so the thing can run 24-7. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I would say, honestly, our wheels take a lot longer than they used to, so um, it's probably more like eight to ten sets a day. So what is that per month? Again, um, with the, the math. Yeah, you know, 150 to 200 sets a month. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. 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 And shipping globally, obviously. Yeah, so yeah. Um, China is actually a huge market for us. Really? Uh, Japan's a huge market for us. Uh, but we ship all over the world, Europe, uh, South America, um, yeah, everywhere. And you're doing stuff for electric cars, too? Yeah, so for, it's all build order, so we can make okay. anything for anything, really. Right. And so, um, you know, Tesla, when the plat when the Model S first came out, and the Model X was, was huge business for us. We did a ton of Model S business. I think Model S sales are just declining so mm -hmm. it's it's and that's a little bit different because they're like say they're generally heavier they are yeah and so the load ratings on the evs you know we go from you know you go from a four thousand pound panamera to a fifty two hundred pound six, yeah six thousand pounds exactly sure. so yeah, my, yeah. Oof, old college the load ratings get just bought an high. e-tron and that thing's yeah. all of six thousand pounds yeah. and he, he put a set of tires on it for the winter yeah. and wore them out <laughs> wore yeah. them out and it was like and we looked at the 
we were just I was just there at his place a, a few weeks ago. And he was showing me the load rating on the tire, yeah. and we did the math, and it was like, these yeah. are right at 100% of load rating. So yeah. they just and it's killed them. They just and killed them. And it's not like they're just these little things that you just cruise around on. Like a, they're high-performance cars. Right. So right. they've got so a putting, ton of mass, but they actually can pull a lot of Gs, right? Yes. So, they, so they're working the tires. They really, really do hard. work the tires and work the yep. wheels pretty yep. hard, so yep. for sure. So what is the, uh, the average employee... Um, count number for at HRE? We're actually hiring people right at the moment. We just added an engineer. We're going to add a couple more engineers. Um, we're right around 45 people. Mm -hmm. um, cool. It's been that way. It's been fairly steady. We've gone up as high as 50, uh, but we've gotten more efficient things. Square changed. footage? Um, it, it's, I think it's between 85 and 90,000 square feet. Wow. So. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a really, really, really nice place yeah. down in Vista uh, near... Uh, San Diego, just north it's of on San the Diego. way down. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's inland of a, well, the first place I wound up in California, it's inland of Oceanside. And uh, yearly, they have uh, an open house that has, it's a drool fest for yeah. sports cars and supercars <laughs> yeah. and hypercars. Um, in fact, you didn't even know they were coming. You had a Senna, the yeah. Marlboro Library. Yeah. Uh, was, McLaren yeah, show was, up and an MC one twelve <laughs> showed up in in race livery too. That was yeah. a that was amazing, and everything else you could think of yeah. uh, shows up. It's it's a and and some and a really good pizza vendor. Outside <laughs> just, no, it was really good. And um, that event's confusing because we whenever I invite people, I'm like, look, hey, we have an open house every year. You should come and 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 it's hard to explain. I said there's a there's a lot of people and they don't realize there's thousands of people that thousands. show up. There's yeah. hundreds of cars. I mean, the, the street is a car show just yeah. because the people are parking wow. on the street. Or up every street. Yeah. And they, so they, they, actually, they actually have these big multi-seat golf carts that go around and take people because it, yeah. it, it sprawls. Yeah. And we had to work. Yeah. We have to work with the city. They had to block. They, they, they tried to shut it down one year before we were working with them because we were blocking traffic all the way to the freeway. And, <laughs> and we didn't, you know, they're like, oops. So we work with them now and they, they direct, they close the road and they redirect traffic and all that stuff. Uh -huh. But wow. part of the thing too is um, we uh, partner with our, uh, the San Diego Food Bank or North County Food Bank. Um, for charity, and last year we raised about fifteen thousand dollars for them. And this year we just got the total a couple days ago. Uh, it was twenty-two thousand dollars. Wow, so, right. that's great. And so yeah. this this started at the far end of the parking lot, yeah. right? With like what eight cars or it was. I, I think I always say it was like 30 people and everybody's like no it was like 30 cars and maybe 100 people I don't think there weren't, there weren't 100 people there were maybe 50 people right yeah. and yeah. so now it's probably 3,000 people yeah it's wow. it's massive wow. yeah. and it's really cool because um, a lot of everything shows up but mainly a lot of the their 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 oh, brand yeah, so. lawyer people well yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just good sports cars and cool yeah. stuff every now a 64 Oldsmobile shows up <laughs> parks in between whose car Ferraris. would that be I, actually we be. do have we like to have the rest of them ones there man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it, 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 we're so known for the exotics and everything but so that's we're almost really, like the, the you know, rest of them become the special cars there, right? <laughs> and, 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 yeah. Honestly, yeah we're mommy, so look at the old car that you <laughs> turned the window crank. <laughs> look, look, a steam-powered car, Mom. <laughs> but the amount of work and the craftsmanship that goes into it, we as car guys, we love that, right? Yeah. And so it's easy to sit there and go 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 crazy over some seven-figure hypercar. Uh, yeah, we, we do that too. But when you see something that somebody has spent just countless hours building up and putting their own personal touch on it, that... Sure. That, 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 that means a lot to us, too. So we love to have those. And you know what I walk away from? Because I've been going down there for a few years now, it, and I've watched it more and more and more. It's a, it looks like a very family event. Like Mom and dads bring kids, and yeah. it's the day out, and they're yeah. looking at all the neat stuff. Yeah. And, and yeah. if you go, <laughs> you show up. Alan gives tours, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm guided the tour, I'm the tours. Tour guide. I'm the tour guide, yeah. But only yeah. three a day. <laughs> it's only one day. Yeah. You do the math. Yeah. It's only three times you can hang out with Alan. Yeah. But, it, but it is fascinating because he takes you through, you know, the yeah. R&D, design, yeah. where they make it, where they ship it. They, yeah. they, they do almost everything in-house. You powder coat in-house, yeah. you assemble in-house, yeah. you machine in-house. So we don't do the raw forging ourselves, although we're looking at ways to maybe vertically integrate a little bit more. But 
uh, yeah, all of the engineering and all of that all the way through. It's nice, especially I'm interviewing engineers right now. And I'm like, look, eventually you're going to be designing wheels. And what's really cool is you get to sit there and design something on a computer. And then you send it to these guys. And then a week later, you walk out there and it's going to be sitting out there. there you know, right. gonna, yeah. you know, you're yeah. going to see it. And that, that makes it a lot of fun. Um, well, it makes it personal. It is. And, and the team is, I mean, that's one th- you know, you, you know, you've known the team for a long yeah, time. Yeah, phenomenal. That's, well, that's why the product's at the level it's at. Yeah. I can tell you, pretending he's not here, mm. which is easy, <laughs> um, <clears throat> since he doesn't care. Yeah, um, it means nothing. <laughs> that everybody down there that I've dealt with is an enthusiast for this stuff mm-hmm. and not only likes what they do, they like where they work or it sure looks like it mm-hmm. and they're very proud of it yeah. well when you have a group of people from the designers to the machinists to everybody like what they do and care about the quality you're nice. going to get a top level exactly. product you're going to get a really good product and, and you're going to get a yeah. top that's level because product every, because everybody cares everybody does care and i think uh, it, for me as ceo that's 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 one of the things that as my i used to design all the wheels and then i did a ran production all these other things now as ceo really my most important role is is making sure we're building the team properly mm-hmm. and maintaining our culture. And our culture is based on trust and integrity, and it's all about trusting each other. And so um, that allows us to have a really tight, tight group because it's hard. It's work. We're struggling. Sometimes we get upset with each other. But when you trust each other, uh, you don't have this. You don't have people. Yeah. You, you yeah. end up forgiving each other for mistakes, and they forgive me when I make mistakes. <laughs> and, and as really, far as you know, yeah, yeah. and it, it ends up being a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful place to work. And I, that's you what know, I tell and you it guys, shows when you come down to the open house, though. Yeah, it, it yeah. shows in just yeah. the yeah. attitude inside the building yeah. and how yeah. everything is kept and how everything flows. You can, and then, you can and tell and it's a very and so when you wake harmonious. up in the morning, it's like you're excited to go to work Absolutely. because it's going to be work. a lot of fun today. You know, yes. even though there may be challenges and stuff like that, and that's kind no, of the way it was the magazine that's too. Exactly. It was a lot yeah. of fun, but you walk you through the door. To it. Yeah, you walk through the door. It. It's not. I, I tell the, uh, you know I'm talking to these guys or that are interviewing. I'm like, look. It, 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 you're going to do exciting work here. It's, it's an interesting place to work. There's the cars and all this other stuff and, and the wheel design, everything is, it's really complex. But at the end of the day, it's not what you do that it's going to determine whether or not you love your job or not. It's who you do it with. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, you can be doing something that's super fun, super great, but if you're working with awful people, you're going to hate your job. Yeah. And so my responsibility is to make sure they love their job. Yep. And so that means the team has to be, tight and the culture has to be tight and we, we we make sure that we enforce that and so it takes a special person to work there yeah, yeah 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 cool so sounds like a lot of fun it is it is a lot of, it <laughs> is a lot of fun I had, i'm yeah, really no, lucky really it's, like, it's yeah, a ton of fun yeah. <laughs> so so we we obviously know and everybody out there has now already went on to hre wheels.com <laughs> Not, not, not her, yeah. not her wheels. Not her wheels. HRE wheels. HRE wheels. <laughs> um, but let's talk a little bit before we run out of time. Uh, I, I know from conversations that there are other things you'd like HRE to maybe do. Um, can you can you expand on what you would like to be doing in the next five, three, five, think, ten years? So HRE is 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 obviously we're a high end wheel company today, um, but we have a lot of technical capability, and so we're starting to branch out into other. We do some work for the military, and we're starting to do some uh, work for some of the hypercar guys. And they're asking us, hey, you can make this, but can you also make this other component? And, and we can. And so we have a lot of capability like that. And so we're trying to build that up. So we're trying to uh, Maybe diversify. Maybe automotive technologies? Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> kind of. Well, technology would be, for me, that term slippery. We actually, so we did just recently create stuff. another company, HRE Performance Technologies. Oh, well, there you go. For that. Look at it. You heard that exactly. here. <laughs> and based on materials? So it's you would it's materials, materials. Different. It, it could be different materials, like carbon fiber or something. Right, right, it could right. be uh, additive is going to play a big role in that. So when we start doing 3D printing, and that point, it's, you're not really beholden necessarily doing wheels, right? So when so, you're doing 3D printing, you're actually printing the actual product. Product. You're not you, building a version of it and then you make it some way other uh, another way. You can do both. Okay. And so right. yeah, you can do both. Yeah. 
And uh, so either way, because a lot of the three D printing stuff is just like a plastic that right, you know, right. It, it's 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 and there is a way actually. We just it's, it's there, but you can't really. We use just it invested in a new three D print. And uh, I mean, I'm, when I say three D printer, it's not like a little thing that I have in my garage. It's it's, a th it's three quarter of a million dollar three D printer, you, and it does print yeah. resin. Okay. Um, and then we'll use that for down, you know, creating something down uh, the road. Okay. And so, yeah. and that's, and then we also. That's the, our main focus now in a lot of ways. And we have to be careful because we're focusing on all this innovation and all these things, right? And then we go, look, look at this carbon fiber thing we just did. Or look at this 3D printer. And our customer's like, hey, that's cool, but where's the new styles? And so we need to remember... Yeah. Yeah. Where, you, where you came from. Yeah. Right. Don't, don't right. take your foot like, off home right. base and too so much. So right now we're really pushing on a lot of new uh, designs that we <clears throat> are super excited about and love, and, and we have plans for a lot more. I got, so. a, I got a new wheel coming, right? For, we, yeah. we've, got a, we've got a 70 Roadrunner called Haraka that we're going to unveil next year, and there was a rim center I really liked, yep. but it was on a one piece. Yeah. And now it's been made to a center on a yeah. three piece. And I got at the open house, I got to see the first yeah. actual physical one and it's, and it's gorgeous. So I'm really, really excited about that. Um, I, I always love uh, working with these guys. I, I just delivered uh, the, the Nova to Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. And yeah. I got a review that I can't read because it, there's a lot of swearing. Um, <laughs> but he's from him. From, from yeah, him. very positive yeah. swearing. Yeah. He's very, very excited, loves the car. And thank you, Joe. Um, but, uh, I always love working with these guys. It's fun, especially when I come ruin their booths at SEMA. <laughs> um, <laughs> we, we brought a Camaro that won the GM design award and it was parked next to at the point at that point in time, the only one was it, was it a 599 or GTO or F12? Yeah. What one was it? I, I can't remember. It was a it was front, the, front engine V12. Yeah, and it was, it was 599, I think. And you, and he, yeah. and Alan had like busted his hump to get this thing here and get wheels on it. It was the only one in America, right? Right. Was, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. At the time, and then our Camaro yeah. was popular. <laughs> so, That's he, okay. He, That's he's, okay. He's, and we understand why. It's okay. It's not <laughs> an issue. We love that. Come on we love that. Thanks. No, I, that's not at all the case. No, we love that, for sure. So. But um, they're, they're a fantastic company to work with with and i can tell yeah. you from experience so and that's why i wanted to bring you up on this because yeah. um we haven't dabbled a whole lot in the what would be categorized as the heavy european yeah. market of stuff except for right. clearly what's surrounding us right now right yeah but, there's, um, there's, a, there's an aura here yes right? there is yeah. it's called wealth yeah. <laughs> but Fast. Um, but these guys uh, very fast very fast the, these guys build a super high quality product that has a lot of visual, what I call visual flexibility because they've got, like we were talking about, heritage wheels. Right. And we've got new cutting edge stuff. And the technology is incredible. When, when research that print, well, we're going to throw some pictures up, but it's, it's spellbinding. When I, when I looked at the wheel, I, I, it was so alien. I didn't even think it was, I thought it was fake. You know, like, this, this can't work. Um, and, and I applaud that. I, I love how you're pushing the game. Yeah. And on top of it, you're coming out, like I said, with a really tasteful new twist on something yeah. so traditional like the torque thrust. So mm -hmm. how fascinating is that to go into something that looks like alien technology? It's almost going in the opposite direction. Yeah. And, and, it's kind of cool. And so then, anybody that's into cars that's watching this, there's something you're going to like. Mm -hmm. And that's that, and that is the idea for all of us. And whether you're, just like you said, even our older vintage stuff and classic stuff, we sell most of those wheels for modern uh, like our our wheel from the 80s, the 501, which is the really tight mesh. That is most commonly sold probably for GT3s, modern 992 GT3s. Mm -hmm. okay. Sure. And yeah. so cuz it's it, got that BBS look, exactly. not to, not to name yeah, the evil does. name. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> it's, it's that's They're under, not evil. We love BBS. It's, it's, I grew it's, up it's I grew up loving BBS. Well, so it's no it's, it's undeniable you can't <laughs> yeah. talk about that rim right. from then and, and not so, say BBS. Right. And so right. Right. you know, and so everybody has their take on it and we're actually coming out with some other different takes on that design as well. And again, we actually we just put that into the carbon barrel, and so Did you? we slightly tweaked it a little bit. Wow. But uh, we're going to create some other versions of it as well that'll go into the carbon. And I fully suspect that that will suddenly become our best-selling carbon wheel. Now, what's 
interesting though is it won't be the lightest weight wheel like our first carbon fiber series were super super lightweight but we just got so many requests so i don't care i yeah. want that design yeah. well the look with is the carbon it, right. none of them are really racing not and a I lot used of them to, are I used to, it's imaging i was i'm an engineer so i used to just beat my head against the wall like we can't do this we can't do that we can't because it's about it's always about performance 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 and the thing is wheels have two functions they they have to perform mm. but they also have to be gorgeous oh, yeah and yeah. so you know i i i've come to grips with that and, and did so, you go to therapy it sounds like <laughs> it's no you know it's like hey the style is just as important as the performance i can and see you on the couch <laughs> they don't understand <laughs> and if you're just doing and if, if you are actually going to take our wheels and go race on them we have series where they are much more simple in their design they're more fundamental and it's it's all it is about the engineering and 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 honestly the cost end up being lower because it's easier to manufacture, but we fa basically focus on strength, stiffness, and weight, mm -hmm. right? And the style does take a back seat. We still think they're super cool looking, mm -hmm. but if you go bang it up, it's not, you're not gonna be crying by the, you know, it, it, yeah. it, it's not a carbon, it's not a $30,000 set of wheels, right? And so, right. Um, it, at the end of the day, it has to be, it has to have that beauty, otherwise nobody's gonna buy it, right? That's really what's gonna drive. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, especially with that, the, the large part of your clientele yeah. is imaging. Yeah. The vehicles they own is imaging, right. uh, performance imaging, but imaging nonetheless. But you want to have the legitimacy. You don't want to spend of a course. ton of money on something that that's pretty, but then, oh, the quality's not there. Of, uh, the of course not. performance isn't there. And right. so we, we always make sure that we're backing it up with all of that, right? And so, you know, that's one thing like Patrick's team, the marketing team, they do not ever have to fake it. Like they don't, sure. I, I'm like, you, you, we don't fake it. Mm -hmm. What you see us saying is true. Yeah. And that's because that's what we do. And, and in fact, I have to pull them back sometimes like, no, 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 no. Like, and they're like, no, like, I don't think you understand. That's what people think. I go, no, there's an engineer out there that's going to know that that's not the right way you say that. You have to mm -hmm. say it like this. And they're like, nobody understands that. And I'm like, trust me, that's how you say it. <laughs> but, <laughs> and it'll you know. be the one guy. Yeah. <laughs> Let the wheel speak for itself. Don't worry about that. But right. this person that isn't, you know, you don't have to talk about the styling. The styling speaks for itself. The engineering right. stuff, if you're going to talk about engineering or talk about technical stuff, you have to make sure it's right. Mm -hmm. You know? And so that's where I step in and I was like, no, 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 no. We're, no, we're not fluffing the engineering stuff. That's real. So, <laughs> lightning round. <laughs> <laughs> own anything you could own. What is it? Oh, gosh. Anything? Not I your could? plane. <laughs> not my plane. <laughs> my plane's not built yet. So. Oh, well, um, fine. Car wise, favorites. Favorites? Mm. It's. I mean, it's hard because I'm. I'm such a. I love Porsches, but. Uh, well, then say it. What. What is you? Uh, if you could have one, what would it be? Probably. Uh, you can have three. I could have three. Well, I'd like to have. Person. I mean, I, I. I like really simple things, so I don't like the crazy, crazy exotics. So I'd like just like a 1969 911S. Mm. Um, they're lightweight. Um, just wonderful. Um, you know, I'd love to have a. Modern 992 GT3 Touring too, but uh, um, well, again, it's unlimited. You know. It's unlimited. What what are the three? What are the three? Um, what are the three magic for? <laughs> I don't know. I have to. Have, I, I guess uh, some sort of 12 cylinder front engine Ferrari. Um, mm -hmm. You yeah. know that's. And, you know, Older GT4, well, like yeah, a 250. Yeah, everybody or? wants a 250 GTO, of course, well, right? Not just but a I mean, GTO. There's <clears> other nice stuff, right? And so I don't think I would be that picky. Um, <laughs> wow. A front engine, like I said. We started the interview with, we really don't care that much. Now, yeah. now we're at the end with, I'm not no, that picky. I mean, like I said, I don't, I, I'm not, I don't know. I, I, I sort of live in reality. And, and, and then maybe what's your driver? Maybe, what's need your, a, what's your maybe I need to spend more time. To, I don't have yeah. anything right now. Okay. I'm, I'm literally, not, I'm driving a Honda. I'm not driving anything. See, it's, look how down to earth yeah. this man is. Uh, <laughs> I'm yeah, focusing on my. Send your donations to <laughs> <laughs> give this guy a car.com. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I am built, I am building a plane in my garage. And really? You're so building a plane in your garage? You're building yeah. your own plane. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Like a, like two a plane, seater? plane. It's, yeah, a like two -seater. a two seater. Experimental thing? Yeah. Like a plane. Yeah, right. like a Is Cessna. It size. Of? It's kind of like the size of a Cessna. Okay. All right. Very cool. Yeah, it's a Rand's S21 outbound. It's okay. really, it's a really nice plane. It's so kind side of, by side or a tandem? It's a side by side. Side by side. And it's a, it's a nice Goldilocks plane. It, it can go very slow without stalling and it can go, it can cruise 135 knots or so. It's very not cool. super fast, but 
it's not a hundred, it's not, you know, you don't want to fly around hundred miles an hour. Like, you, you know, that's, that's really slow. slow. That's yes. really slow. In, in airplanes, airplane. that's, that's slow. That's really yeah. slow. Yeah. So like homing, um, I'm not, I haven't picked the engine. Uh, the current engine I want is actually a, this 220 horsepower flat six turbo. Okay. And so that's quite a lot of engine for that, uh, mm -hmm. plane, but that's uh, wide too. I, if it's a flat six. Uh, they're all flat. Okay. So the, even the light homies are flat fours. Okay. And so it's a little bit longer, but it's more modern. So it's, it's actually fits. Um, and when you live out here in the West, um, we have high mountains, not too far away. So it's nice to have the so turbo. And the so, turbo, so you have the power to get over the hills. Yeah. And, and so mountains. when you land, you land a big bear in the summertime, you know, it may, you're at 8,000 feet, but the density yeah. altitude is 12,000 feet. Yeah, so yeah. that, you know, Seth that I fly isn't going to get out of there. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so, yeah. So having a turbo helps. You'll get in, but you won't be able to get out. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. So, so, so I went to, a car, went to a car show in Des Moines um, about a month ago, and it was at, a, at the Ankeny Airport, and this guy flew in in a pit special. Oh, nice. And for those who don't know what that is, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a biplane, a biplane with, yeah. with a big motor and yeah. short wings and yeah. can pull. Yeah, I, I, talk, I asked the guys how many Gs, and he goes, well, I don't have a G meter in this thing, but I think it was around seven. Yeah. Ooh, seven Gs. Yeah. Seven it's an aerobatic, Gs. an aerobatic yes. biplane, basically. Aerobatics. Yeah. yeah. It's oh, insane. crazy people. Yes. yes. It's a single-seater, <laughs> so I said, <laughs> sad part is you can't take yeah. anybody for a ride because right. single seater. He says, "Well, his grandfather and he built the car, or the, air, the car, the airplane themselves in their garage, and uh, it took them seven years to build yeah. it. it was, oh, it was spectacular! And the guy yeah. just flew in because there was a car show there, so he wanted to see the cars. And we're overlooking his airplane. Yeah, <laughs> it was very yeah. cool. It's so, hard. I mean, how long have you know, been working on the plane? I got it." In uh, September, I started, so it's going to take a couple oh, so years. Oh, it's fresh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and so I don't have, you know, life gets in the way, and so you can't yeah. work on it forever. So is this a composite airplane? No, or? it's all aluminum. It's aluminum? all riveted aluminum, okay. yeah. And so, um, yeah, I don't I do not do so well working with... Uh, composites are hard composites to work with. Hard. That's, that's, they hard. Hard. that's yeah. hard to work with. It's, so it's riveted? It's messy. Oh. Yeah, it's all riveted. Yeah? <clears throat> Fully riveted construction. Yeah. So. I went to... Yeah. That's uh, cool as hell. It is. <laughs> it is. Well, It'll be cool when it's flying. So the deal is with an experimental aircraft, you can build it, but then you have to take it to someone with an aviation certification, and they sign off on the. Work so the that FAA will come uh, once it's fully assembled. The FAA will come and inspect it, and mm -hmm. they sign off on it. Then I got to do uh, flight testing, and then once the flight testing is over, they sign off on it. Then I'm good to go. Um, I at that point am the certified mechanic for it, so I'm okay. able to work okay. on it myself. Cool. And also, what's nice is you can change anything you want on an experimental. You can put, um, you know, I'll have extremely modern avionics in it and autopilot and all that stuff. It'll be, it'll be glass cockpit. Yeah, uh, it'll be simple mechanically, but yeah. electronically it'll be Very really cool. advanced. Very and cool. So that that's neat. That's a neat thing about experimental. Yeah. For sure. yeah. Wow. Well. We, yeah. We've run out of time. We've run out of time. How about as, that? As, as you know, always. It, it happens very, very quickly. So we want to thank Alan for showing up thank here. You guys. It was a great thank time. Guys. We need great. to thank the Peterson people <laughs> for le allowing us to come down here. This is this is very cool. I mean, I, I'm just geeking out on all the cars. And uh, we also want to thank our friends at ARP-Bolts.com for helping us out with this whole thing. And uh, if you like what you see here, keep watching because we'll keep telling you stories.